is AEDT 1170U, Psychological Foundations and Digital Technologies, Module 7, Video 7.1. Today we'll be talking about the psychology of experiential learning, or how we learn from experience. Here are the guiding questions for this video. First of all, what are the dimensions of experiential learning, and how does our experience with technology shape that learning? This could be positive or negative, so think back to some of the experiences that you had using a new technology. Could have been a great experience or might have been very frustrating, and how did that shape your learning about the new mode of technology? We're going to look at some of the major theories and models of experiential learning, and I'm going to challenge you to look at your own narrative or life story as an adult learner and how that's been shaped by the digital world around you. A reminder, shut your cell phone off before you watch this video. Otherwise, the digital world is really shaping you. I want you to reflect on these questions. Choose two life experiences that you've learned from, and they could be positive or negative. What was the circumstance surrounding the learning? Would you or could you have learned that lesson any other way? What factors in your life changed because of the learning? And how much of an impact did technology have on your learning? We're going to be sharing these experiences in tutorial, and I'll remind you of our norms that we set in the very first module for online communities, which is that you do have the right to pass, and we'll be sharing these in an environment of mutual respect. We learn from experience in a wide variety of ways. Sometimes we learn from faster from experience than we do from any other way, and we learn from our mistakes and our failures as redirections. We can learn from direct embodied experience, in terms of what is happening to us right now, if it engages us mentally, physically, and emotionally in that particular moment. We can also learn from simulated experience, and this may be virtual worlds or alternative worlds. We can learn from reliving a past memory or an experience, and we can also learn from collaborating with others in a community, such as a learning community, a professional community, or a community of practice. We can also learn from our own introspective experiences such as meditation or dreaming and remember we also learn from our intuition. What was that? <laughs> the weather. <laughs> Very peculiar. Don't you think? Yeah. Looks like the winds are changing. Ah, uh, change is good. Yeah, but it's not easy. I know what I have to do, but... Going back means I'll have to face my past. I've been running from it for so long. Ow! Jeez, what was that for? It doesn't matter. It's in the past. <laughs> yeah, but it still hurts. Oh, yes, the past can hurt. But the way I see it, you can either run from it or learn from it. Ah! You see? So what are you going to do? First, I'm going to take your stick. No, 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 no! Not a stick! Hey! Where are you going? I'm going back! Good! Go on! Get out of here! <laughs> here are some of the dimensions of experiential learning. Fenwick proposed five different perspectives that really ask us some important questions about the nature of experience and how it can shape our learnings. And each one of these perspectives relates to a particular type of learning theory that we've already talked about. The first one is when we reflect on our concrete experience, and this would be considered constructivist learning theory. Remember that means that we are creating the meaning as we go, and that the learner is an active participant in constructing the meaning and constructing new knowledge, which they combine with the experiences they already have. The second one is participating in a community of practice, which would be situated learning theory. Some examples of this uh, might be learning in a residential medical training or an apprenticeship. The third way would be getting in touch with our unconscious desires and fears, which would relate way back to Freud's psychoanalytic theory of learning. A fourth perspective is the critical cultural theory, which is resisting the dominant social norms of experience. So learning what not to do, what's happening around us, and how, do that, how does that shape us. And the fifth one that Fenwick refers to is exploring the ecological relationships between our cognitions and our environment. So this is a complex, complexity theory way of looking at things. It would relate to the planetary approach um, when we talked about Taylor's lenses of experience. Let's take a look at some of these in greater detail. 
As we said, constructivist learning theory proposes that people have concrete experiences and it's when they reflect on them they construct new knowledge based on both those reflections and the own experience and the biography that they bring to the learning experience. So what you brought to this course is going to shape really what you get out of it. The focus here is on the learner's ability to actively make connections as a result of their experience. So whatever your previous experience was with online learning, um, that may have shaped your perceptions and your expectations about this course. Can you think of some other examples? Teacher training might be one, some other professional schools, nurse training might be another one. Um, constructivist learning is also often used in elementary and secondary school teaching. In situated learning theory, you are right in the situation, so knowing is intertwined with doing. It's a very practical, ongoing way of learning. And the goal, really, is to put you in a community of practice. So this would be putting apprentices together or putting work groups in an employee um, situation together. And the community starts to refine its practices and changes those, hopefully, that are dysfunctional or not working. So it's very much a work in progress. So if you think of some examples of this, that might include any professional development that you've done at your job, um, staff work sessions, any work teams that you've been on, um, or anything that puts you right in the middle of a problem-solving kind of situation. Psychoanalytic theory is the next one which talks about our unconscious interfering with our conscious experiences. For example, if you had a really bad experience long ago with digital environments and learning, you might be a little bit nervous about taking this course. So you'd have to work through that psychic conflict in order to be open to learning in this course. So there's a very complex role of desire in our learning and we might have conflicting desires. In other words, you might want to be doing something else other than you know, watching a video. Um, so we want to take a look at how our desires and learning are connected. Some of the examples of this might be uh, changing a habit, um, recovering from an addiction, or any kind of behavior change like a, a weight loss program or a quitting smoking program. Uh, might take a look back at our unconscious desires. Do you really want to change or is there something else going on underneath? So that's way back to Freud. And finally, critical culture learning theory says that the purpose of the learning experience is to transform the existing social order and resisting what the dominant norms are. So you might think that if a certain uh, work environment is not working, then your goal is to kind of change the conditions for the workers and change what's going on. Um, can you think of some examples of this? Um, historically, segregated schools might be an example. That This is a social order that wasn't working anymore, so people resisted the dominant norm of experience. And finally, complexity learning theory. Um, learning is really produced through an interaction with a very complex system. Um, this one is very applicable to everything we do in adult learning, and particularly in an online environment, because you're each sitting in a very different space while you're taking the course. The complexity involves your consciousness, are you present, are you thinking about something else, um, your identity, do you see yourself as a digital learner, what action are you taking, and how, how are you interacting with the experience. So we can use the tutorial experience to, to have the interaction piece. It's really not focused on the learning experience itself, but on the relationships that keep everything going together. So this is something we can talk about in tutorial. Are we doing a good job of keeping the balance between the video portion of the course, the tutorial, the assignments, and the dialogue between peers? An example of this might be a, a school team or a work team that has a very complex nature of motivations and uh, even a regular classroom would be an example of this with 30 different students with different learning needs. So it's a very complex learning environment. Some general principles of experiential learning are as follows. Adults arrive at a learning process with a huge wealth of experiences to draw upon and adults tend to define themselves by their experiences and roles such as they're a parent, you're a spouse, you're a nurse, you're a physician, you're a volunteer. If you think of the question you're most asked or the one you ask when you're meeting a new person, it's usually, and what do you do? Not, and who are you? Or what do you value? It's a very westernized concept of the self, so you might want to take a look at that one. We also know that learning is a continuous process grounded in experience and that knowledge tends to be derived from ongoing testing of those experiences, both personally and objectively. 
Well, what does that mean, for example, in this course? It means you're continuously testing whether this is working for you. You're, you're seeing if the tutorial, you're getting what you want out of it, if the system is working for you or not, personally and in learning goals. Here are the synthesis questions for this video, and I hope you find them interesting. First of all, brainstorm how your life might have been different if you did not learn from some of the significant experiences that you had. Because we usually have a choice as to whether we're going to learn from what happens to us or not. Next, did technology have an overall impact on you? Does it have a bigger impact on your children if you're a parent? In what way did technology affect your overall learning? For example, your experiences with other online courses or even just learning to use your new iPhone or your iPad. Reflect on the role that experiential learning has in the lives of those around you. For example, your colleagues, your children, or your spouse, people in your life, and see how powerful it is in shaping their learning. And finally, examine how a positive or negative experience with digital learning can shape our view of using new technologies. I look forward to our discussions in tutorial this week.